this is Sana from Ready and Thriving, and today we're going to go through how to prepare your pet for traveling on an airplane. And we'll go through all the kind of main steps, so getting that air ticket, what you should make sure to do so that everything is foolproof, um, getting any types of vet or health certificates um, or anything you may need for that, um, making sure to have a great in-flight experience, so getting the right kind of um, den uh, for your animal and also um, things to think about when you're actually in the airport. We'll also um, talk about about um, ways to prepare um, ahead of time so that you have the most comfortable and confident trip ever. And then also um, we'll talk at the end about any international requirements. Um, I've done a lot of international travel um, with my dog on planes and there's a lot really to know about that. Um, so we'll cover all those areas um, and we'll just go through kind of quickly um, but with all the main points so that you can confidently travel um, with your dog, cat, or pet. One of the first key steps is getting that airplane ticket and getting it done appropriately so that your pet can ride with you in the cabin. And not all airlines allow that, and even airlines that do allow it on some flights may not allow it for other flights. Um, in general, um, many countries who allow um, pets to be on airplanes, um, you'll be able to do that domestically uh, within your own country uh, without too much trouble. However, there are normally limits to how many animals can be on a plane. And there are other types of regulations, even between different regions. So for example, in the United States, if you are flying from the contiguous 48 states to Hawaii, um, there are a lot of regulations and it may not even be possible um, to take your pet if it's just for vacation. So important to know all of those things um, and to get your flight set up appropriately. So, what are the key things to do? First thing is research which airliner um, that flies between your destinations and is pet friendly. And there's so much information online now that you can go to your preferred carriers and check that out. Or even look online for which are the carriers that are known for being particularly good with pets. Um, so for example, um, in the US, um, JetBlue is very good. Um, and there are many of them that actually um, you can fly with your pet. Um, in the UK, if you are flying um, domestically, it's less of an issue. But if you're flying internationally, it can be very complicated because of different types of quarantine rules. Um, but even they have a part of British Airways that flies from Paris um, to other destinations that is very pet friendly. So do check um, your preferred airlines and find out their pet policy. And just first of all, confirm that um, the flights can take place and that they allow pets. And then secondly, learn their pet policy. So what is it that's needed for it? Um, they'll normally have the details of what type of carrier, um, which section of the seats um, you can sit in um, as normally in cabin pets go under the seat in front of you um, in a nice little carry case that looks a bit like a gym case. Different types of plane configurations um, only have that space available in certain areas. So in some cases you'll be limited that you must fly in economy um, to be able to have enough space uh, for your pet. In others it might be that first class or economy works just fine but maybe even the economy plus um, just doesn't have that space. So it, they'll tell you in that section. So just read through through that and just make sure you know uh, because most ticketing sections are not real smart about it so even if they allow you to put in a pet reservation they're not always real smart about not letting you get those seats that actually you can't have a pet so do make yourself aware of those so that's the first thing is just to research which airline's going to be best for you and then in the ticketing process make sure to make sure it's a two-step process. So when you're making your reservation, um, do your best to actually get the pet reservation 
in there. Um, many of them, so for example, um, Delta Airlines, if you actually access to buy a flight from the pet page, then it already cues it up that you can put in there, yes, I have a pet, and you can even load in their profile, so their name, their size, um, and, and their breed, etc. Um, so that's ideal if you can already book your plane ticket with the pet already mentioned. Now, if you can't, which is also actually quite common, then um, you'll definitely want to, as soon as you have bought your ticket, call the flight carrier and talk to the pet reservation group. And then they can attach the pet reservation to your flight and do that as soon as possible because um, there are limits to the number of animals that are um, within different sections. So normally, for example, there might be a limit of um, four animals in the economy section or just one in first class, for example. So we want yours to be the ones that are reserved for the trip. And um, so make sure to do that as soon as you've made your reservation. Now, I also, you know, even if I am able to book it electronically, I always do the call afterwards because almost never... I think never in all the times I've flown um, have I been able to like actually pay for the pet charge, which there normally is a, a pet charge um, of let's say uh, about a hundred dollars or um, you know maybe fifty euros um, depending. Um, but normally that charge doesn't come up when you're actually buying your ticket, and they may um, go ahead and take it when you're checking in. Um, but I always like to make sure that that's paid, that the reservation's in. So even if I've made my electronic reservation, I always give them a call. And then normally they can take care of all the rest of it. So they can see it there, know that it's reserved. They can make sure that the seat is appropriate for a pet seat. Um, because it may also be that you can't be in an emergency exit row or be in a bulkhead seat at the front of a plane, for example. So um, important to double check that. Um, and then um, you could even pay in advance um, for most airlines um, right there via phone. So everything is easy on the day. Then, of course, print out the paperwork that shows that um, you've paid for your pet reservation or that you have it um, and all the details for your flight. So very easy to buy your ticket, choose the right airline, then make sure in the reservation that you're noting that it's got a pet reservation. Either way, call immediately after you've booked that flight and attach the pet reservation and make sure all the logistics are taken care of in advance. Then you'll have a nice smooth trip with all the logistics taken care of and no issues once you get to the airport. So right after getting the flight, the next thing I do is make a vet appointment for my um, animal. And the reason for that is really twofold. One is, of course, for overall health. So I want to discuss with the vet um, that we're flying and also where we'll be going, because maybe there'll be something there that's unique that we may want to um, prepare for. So maybe they'll need heartworm medication in that particular area so we can go ahead and um, get that ready to go. Or if you're going um, someplace where there are rattlesnakes or something, there are vaccines for that. Um, so, you know, you can prepare in advance and get everything you need to have a good, healthy, safe trip. Um, the other thing is, is you probably will need to get a letter or health certificate from the vet to fly. Um, so, for example, um, it may be either a letter or even a health certificate with stamps and all that sort of thing that shows that your animal is fit to fly. And most airlines will want that. Um, in some cases, um, your animal may have a pet passport. So if you're in the EU or in some of the neighboring countries of the EU, you will have a pet passport. And there is an area uh, for those um, stamps that, yes, they're fit to fly on these dates um, and that sort of thing. So it may just be in here or you may actually have to get um, letters with official stamps depending on what country you're in. So you, now the other thing is that you'll want to know about the regulations of where you're going. So like I said in most domestic flights um, it's not really that much of an issue 
Um, however, if you are going to an island or something like that, it may be slightly different, um, even though it's within the same country. So definitely double check that. And if you're going internationally, you'll definitely need other paperwork. So that's absolutely critical. We'll, we'll cover that in more detail at the end, but important that you must get that from your vet, um, any type of information that you need. Now, if they, you are on a um, European scheme, everything will be in your pet passport. It'll be super easy. It'll have their microchip number with all the vaccinations, um, all the certifications, and all the appointments um, where they're fit to fly all in one easy way to do it um, but then you may also need to get something if you're going to particular countries don't have certain diseases at all like certain types of parasites they actually require you to have a treatment 24 hours before you go so just know that and then you can get a quick certificate also that your animal has um, had that treatment and that they're good to go um, into the new country so you'll need to make sure that you get all of those particular pieces of paperwork, um, whether they're in your passport, whether you have um, letters or certificates. Um, and then also, I always like to carry with me um, the actual rabies certificate that I have for um, my um, dog, for example, and also any type of vaccination record um, of all the vaccines um, that she's had so that um, that can be you know in the little bundle just in case so make sure to look on the international websites or on your own um, country's websites about going to different areas is there any paperwork that you'll need if you're flying you certainly should get a letter that your animals fit to fly and get any other things that you'll need um, to prepare for your travel the next thing to consider is that you have the right carrying case so that your pet can be very comfortable um, during the trip. So what is normally required is a particular size um, by the airline, but also that it's well ventilated. So in this case, for example, this is all mesh. Um, all of these sections are mesh so that air can get in very easily. Um, it, this one in particular actually folds up so it fits the right dimensions to go under the seat. I also like um, and recommend to get a soft cover one because in my experience um, different airlines and how they set up even their different um, sections of the plane even if you're on the aisle uh, versus being um, on the window there may be different sizes underneath the seat in front of you so a, a soft-sided one still has strong supports to make sure that it stays up and and is not encroaching on your dog so it has strong support but it's flexible enough that it can wiggle around and you'll be able to get it into that space so i do recommend that even though they say the hard carry ones will fit in my experience it's best to have that flexibility if you can now, I do like that this one can actually fold out a bit, give my animal a little bit more space um, so she can be in here and comfortable and, and I can carry her easily um, over my shoulder. I can reach in from the top and pet her. Um, there is also a feature um, that has something that will attach to her collar so that if I do have this open, she can't jump out, for example. So there's some good features like that um, to look for. Um, and I do like the side opening because then you can use whatever space there is that's extra just to give that little extra um, space uh, for the bed. The other thing you want to do then is to make sure that your pet is very comfortable with it. So I always like to introduce my dog or reintroduce her to this by putting some treats in, um, having it down on the ground for a while, hiding some toys in here, making it kind of a fun thing and a little den that she can go into and start to get very relaxed and comfortable in it. What you don't want to have is an animal already frightened um, by the case that they're in and then also being put into a new situation at the airport, in a plane, um, the noise of an airplane, for example, too. So get them accustomed and happy enough, maybe even take them on little car rides or something with um, this bag or carry them around um, a little bit just to get them used to case. 
and make sure that the bag is packed with everything that you will need for the flight and the travel there. So if you do want to put any blanket in, any toy, um, if a grooming might be needed, uh, you may want to bring that as well. Make sure always to have a water um, bowl and I do once we get into the flight and she's under the seat then I'll fill that with water and put it in with her um, at that point um, so that she does have it for the duration of the flight so you'll always want to have this even if it's a short duration flight because you never know if a flight is delayed or anything like that and you'll want to be able to um, give them some water um, I like these that actually you know get down to a nice small size um, so that they're easier to carry so um, the fabric ones or these silicone ones. Um, also make sure that you have um, the name of the dog. I always like to put my travel itinerary actually in the bag um, just